one. Hello and good evening and welcome to my Doise de Vlanderen preview. I am delighted to rejoin Edward Toons of Trek Sega Fredo. Edward, how are we tonight? We are good. Thank e you. Excellent. Now, it's been a long time since we have spoken. It was way back in the Tour Down Under. Uh, a lot of races since then, looking back, particularly at Umloop and Kurna versus Kurna, what didn't quite get the results you were looking for there. What what do you remember about it? What what were your feelings after the race? Uh, I was uh, I thought all those passes were really hard to expectations and uh, I crashed with uh, when I went on the Lippenoverstraat and uh, uh, yeah the big road that uh, was a big disappointment and also I think in Pyrna I was not really there because of the disappointment of the day before so uh, the feeling was not bad but no results. Because you, you made the initial selection on the Tannenberg in Umloop. Yeah? Yeah. The, I was there until I crashed, actually. So I was pretty good, but yeah. And then you the, were... The, the strongest guy. <laughs> you were riding Paris-Nice. Uh, preparation for the upcoming races also as lead out for Degenkolb. Uh, how how did you get on in Paris Nice? How were you feeling after it? Um, it went a bit with ups and downs for me, but I was quite happy because uh, I finished off really good. I did a good job for, for uh, Contador. We had the last three days hard climbing stages, but I could do pretty well. Well, and especially the last day, I was really happy. I could do a really Good pull uh, in the peloton and then just uh, rode easy to the bus. So I finished it with a good feeling and then had some days of rest. So um, I think for me, I needed uh, Paris-Nice to get a bit, the, to have the next step in the, in the, in the form. So that you are now turning into a, a super climbing domestic for Calentador. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll see you in the, the mountain train, yeah? Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can do a mountain quite okay, but as a super climbing domestic, uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Now, we return to a race that you know very well and have been successful here before. You were third, uh, sorry, you were second two years ago. You were third last season. Uh, why do you think you have such good results in this race? Um, uh, I think that the first year I was second, I was really good. And then last year I was third, I I think also because if you do good the year before, then you always have a bit of a special feeling the year after that you can do good because you did good last year. So maybe that's why there's a little bit of extra motivation there. Um, but yeah, it's just, I wouldn't say this race particularly suits me because the, the parkour is quite similar to other Flemish races. So. I think if uh, this race suits you, you have different kind. Of, uh, yeah, you have more races in in Flanders that suit you. But it's just yeah, I did good in the, the two years ago, and the next year I was extra motivated <laughs> to do good again. And well, so we now I'm motivated. Will we see you leading the peloton up the Tannenberg like we have before? Uh I hope so, but we will see. It's always a big fight uh, before it, so you can't say 100% sure I'll be there, but I'm, I'm really going to try. Now, you arrive with what looks a strong team on paper. Yourself, Fabio Fellini, Boy Van Poppel, Lauren Didier, riders, uh, Mads Pedersen, riders who are very, very strong, uh, and you look to have one of the best teams in the race. Uh, 
are you looking forward to riding with such strong men on Wednesday? Yeah, of course. Um, maybe some of them don't have the uh, the knowledge of the parkour, really, but I think uh, the team is doing a good job in preparing the guys with the right information before the race and also during the race. So um, also guys like me or in other races, Jasper, we can really give the information to the guys because we know it really good here. And I think that's really important for the, the races here to save energy. Oh, the the hills that are coming up in the spots. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here with a strong team. So uh, yeah, we have some ambitions. Now, like normal in races with this similar parkour, Eichenberg is usually when the kind of real racing starts. Then Tenberg, Quarmon, Paterberg. Uh, I presume it's just very important to be at the front from Eichenberg onwards. Yeah, I think uh, Tienberg is the most important, like like in some other races. But uh, Eichenberg is already there. Uh, if you want to be on, in a good position for time back and don't want to spend too much energy before it, uh, then you have to be in a okay position on Eckenbach. So um, it's always the same story uh, towards time back. It's uh, almost a sprint. So uh, uh, from Eckenbach they go up and then. Normally they put the tempo high to time back, so if you're in the back on Eikenbach, then it's really hard to, to get to the front again. Of, of the three climbs, Tenenberg, Quarmont, Paterberg, which one, which one do you not like? <laughs> Quarmont. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just a mental thing, but in the past, Years I always been struggling on it because it's uh, it's one of the longer climbs and the the Flemish races and uh, I like more the the explosive climbs and Quarmont is more yeah it's a little bit longer and you can't put like on time but you almost sprint uphill but on Quarmont if you do that and. You're just standing still halfway, and then you have to crawl the the, the other half half up. So, uh, yeah. But I have done some good rides on the Quarmon, but always too far back. So I hope if I'm in a good position. I remember that, uh, uh, two years ago on Paterberg, you went up with Kwiatkowski, didn't you? You were not a bad rider to ride beside and, and test yourself against. So Paterberg is clearly uh, Paterberg is clearly a, a claim much more suited to you. Yeah, yeah. I I remember uh, back then that uh, Walter Planka told us before uh, the race if you're in the front group and you arrive uh, on the, or the Quarmont, then just stay in the wheel between the Quarmont and the Paterberg because on the Paterberg you can. They still can drop you, so that's what we did. But actually, on that moment, I felt like okay. It's the the the, it's the, the main road <laughs> after the Quaramont leading to Paterberg, the the big kind of dual carriage where it goes like this. Uh, that is one of the hardest points. It looks for me, it's very very difficult. Uh, it's great for fans because ah. we see the the long shot behind, so you can see how far behind riders are. Uh, is, I suppose that's just another part of the race, that, that, that section. Yeah, and the bunch it can be really hard, especially if you're farther in the back. But if you're there in a small group, it's actually pretty okay. Because uh, you have a little bit of the speed from the little descent and then you can go up. But I think it's always uh, yeah, the path is back. Quarmon Patersberg is always a, a hard combination, and uh, it's it's two climbs where you just have to be in the front, and the the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> the organisers have tried to make the finish of the race a little bit harder. Uh, they've added a, a cobble section just 
six kilometres from the end. Uh, for those that watched Nook of Course, it's the same cobble sector that was in that point. Do you think this this has an impact on the race, or do you think it's it's not really going to change anything? I think uh, maybe not the cobble section, but uh, last year we came on top of Nokerberg and we went left, and then it always was a pretty big, big road. But now we go straight and we go downhill, some small roads, a little bit up and down. So maybe if there are some attacks on, on Nokerberg, um, I think it's... It's better for the guys who want to attack on Nokerberg to try and make a gap because last year it was really hard when you came on the big road and there's a peloton behind it. Not so easy, but if you to get some organization and then you still have the cobbles, then maybe it can be a little bit better for guys who want to try to go in the end. But. I think um, I think it's still hard to really if it's if it's still a big bunch to really escape there and stay away to stay away to the finish. I think it's really hard, even though there's a couple seconds. Okay, so we have done some stars as per usual uh, for this race. One star you have Michael Matthews. Lars Bohm and Jens de Boucher, the defending champion. Uh, it will be interesting to see how Matthews copes. Uh, I don't think he has a, a tremendous uh, history in, in cobbled races, but clearly he's a very talented rider. What, what do you think he'll bring to the race? Yeah, he's a good rider, and I think he's he's on form, uh, even though in San Remo maybe he didn't get the result he wanted, but in Paris, I saw him riding pretty good, and I think the more race days he will have in the legs now, the better he will get. So I think he's a guy who can, who can really be there. Uh, I, I too have Lars Bohm as a one star rider. Uh, clearly, back now, Jumbo, team leader, very, very talented rider. Oh, good on cobbles, good on the short climbs. I'm sure he will go well. You have De Boucher, you have a, some faith in uh, the defending champion. I don't. I don't have him on my stars, uh, which might be a mistake. Uh, I, I, we just, I talked to Oliver Nason recently tonight, and he was saying he expected De Boucher to be good this week as well. Yeah, but like, also like I said, if you do, he, he won the race last year, so for sure he's going to have some... A little bit of extra motivation to be good again, and uh, I think he's a guy who is good in his races. And if he has a good day and he's still there, it's pretty fast at the finish. So I think with a little bit of extra motivation, he can be there. But uh, I don't really know how his form is because I think I haven't been riding with him the last week. So, so I also have as the former winner. I have uh, Fabio Fellini uh, at one star and Luke Durbridge. Durbridge, who I think was sixth in Strada Bianchi. He is a rider who seems to get better and better and better in these conditions. Uh, obviously needs a, a breakaway of some description, but I like what he brings to the race. Fellini was very impressive in Umloop uh, and he, he's a strong rider. I think he, he, he's a, a good second option for Trek after yourself. Now, two stars you have, as a surprise maybe for some people, Fernando Gaviria, Oliver Nason and Tij Benut. Some regular names that these fans of this show will, will know. You think, uh, Benut was unlucky last season here, was very attacking, do you think he can be a bit luckier? He's always a guy who is good and he's always a guy who who is attacking. Um, he hasn't had the luck yet to to really get the win, but I I think he keeps he keeps going, keeps attacking. So I think for him the win will come one day eventually. So I think uh, in these kind of races 
also with a bit of uh, bad weather they predict. Uh, I think he's a he's always a guy to put in the in the stars. Oliver Mason, I have him at two stars as well. Looked very strong in Umloop and Kurna. Agree? Yeah, he's a bit, a, a bit a, the same as Tish. He's always strong. He's always there. He has like this kind of mentality that he doesn't feel pressure or anything. He he's just yeah, looks to be all, always good. Good so. Not complaining, nothing. So always, guys, to, to put in your uh, put in your list. I think. And only two yeah, stars Gaviria, for Gaviria. Yeah. Um, last year he was also kind of a favorite, but he he started the sprint and then immediately like blocked or something. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Well, in uh, San Remo, he looked really good, but uh, it's not. It's a diff- It's a little bit a different kind of race. So uh, yeah. Yeah. If if he has a sore wrist, then uh, the Quarmont will be interesting for him. Uh, my two stars. I've got Nason. I have Demar, uh, who you have in three stars. So I'll let you talk about him in a minute. And I have Terpstra. Terpstra, who's won this race twice before, seems to be. Peaking maybe a bit later than last season wasn't brilliant earlier, but had a good terrain. Uh, I would expect to see quick step as usual uh, at the front of the race, and Terstra will have a good chance, uh, especially if the weather is not ideal. Uh, three stars you have Demar, Van Mark, and Gilbert. Uh, Demar has looked very impressive so far this season. You obviously raced against him, with him, in, in Paris Nice. Did he, did he impress you? Yeah, Parinis, I think the, the first stage he won is quite impressive. Also, um, I remember the time trial in Algarve he did was he was sixth there. So if you can do that kind of efforts, then you then I think like the Quaremont or something like that is not a problem. So he's a guy who can stand bad weather, who can stand cobbles and stuff like this and also is faster to finish he's clearly in a in a good form I think so uh, I think he's one of the guys uh, that can really be a, a big one to to look at what about Gilbert he he's not quite been at the top top level since his move to quick step uh, you think he's just kind of peaking maybe a bit later yeah, I don't know, but I saw him doing also in Polynesia, riding really strong, doing things that I like. The one attack he did uh, to a small group, and then everybody thought, like, yeah, he's killing himself, but he made it. And then afterwards, he still attacked the solo uh, to try to make it. But uh, I think also in San Remo, he was pretty good. Uh, on the Chipressa, you could see him like looking back and riding almost e- easy uphill. So uh, I think he also wants to prove himself in the, in the more Flemish races than in the in the later races. So um, I mean, he's a dangerous guy. And Van Mark, I read somewhere um, he was talking about a, a rib injury potentially that he, he has had in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I uh, I just read on the, the website of Sports Art that it's getting better. So uh, he he's a guy. I think he can really suffer hard. And uh, he, in Omloop, he was also there um, when when Sagan went. It was not not an easy moment to go with him. So um, I think his form will not be. Vanished by uh, some small crash in uh, in Strade Bianchi. So. Cannondale looking for a victory as well. They, I think Is, they've still to win in the World Tour this season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three stars I have Gaviria. Uh, sensational athlete. Can sprint, can ride aggressively. I have Benut. I agree with you. 
he always seems a little unlucky still to win that first pro victory. Uh, he did say to me that he, he only rides hard races, so <laughs> he's not too worried. Uh, and I have some small sprinter from Trek called Edward Toons who who's featured on the podium here in the past couple of years and despite not putting himself in the stars I, I will do that uh, yeah I, I think it's going to be a good race for you I would hope you seem to, to like this and I agree if we I think it looks like we could potentially have a sprint maybe 20-25 riders and if you're feeling good and fresh then I would hope to see you there uh, okay if you had to pick one rider who is it going to be? Uh, okay, I will go. I will go you. There you go. I, I will go yourself. No pressure. <laughs> I'm doing. I'm doing the, my best to hold on to the pressure. Don't put anyone of the team in the stars. <laughs> yeah, and I've just blown it all. That's it. Then, who needs? Who needs no pressure? Uh, my pick is is Edward Toons, and he goes for Arnold Demar. Uh, Edward, you have a, a busy week, obviously, coming up. You've got this race. Did I read that you are not doing E3? No. I'm doing uh, uh, Gantt Ebrogham on Sunday. Uh, then I have uh, three days of the pan. Flanders, uh, Schaldepres and Ruby normally. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, but I like it. Well, thank you very much for taking your time to come on tonight and best of luck on Wednesday. I expect to see you on the podium again. I'm going to try. <laughs> but I, I, I still miss the one, one podium spot I haven't had, so I'm going for that one. Exactly. Well, Edward, thank you very much and best of luck on Wednesday. Thank you.